This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to take a short audio clip and we're going to upload it to our Rails application. And the really cool thing here is when we upload it, we're immediately going to see some kind of progress. And then in the background, it's going to do the transcription and then automatically update our screen. And so this one happened really fast. So let's try this again, but this time we're going to use a video file. And when we create the project, it'll go into the pinning, it'll start processing, and then it'll get completed. And so this was all really fast. But I want to try it again now, but this time we're going to take a large video file. And this is the episode that I did on Maersk, and it's going to take much longer to do. We'll see that it goes from the pending, it'll go into the processing, and it's going to sit in the processing for a while because it has to transcode a lot of the audio data. However, I am using my Ubuntu machine, which does have an NVIDIA graphics card, so it's going to go through that whole transcription process much faster. And so here we can see that it did a whole bunch of text. And the NVIDIA graphics card was able to do it in about one minute flat. Whereas on my Apple M1 machine, it took it about seven to eight minutes. So there definitely is a huge difference between a CPU and a GPU based transcribing. And for the most part, I found that this was very accurate. There are some things like the transcription of Merce that did not come over correctly, so a lot of the proper nouns aren't going to work too well. However, using this approach opposed to others that I've tried in the past, this is much more accurate. And so in this episode, we're going to be creating this AI transcriber. And one approach here is that if we look under the pricing, and if we go down to the audio models, there is this whisper model that can transcribe the speech into text. However, we're not going to be using this per se. I don't want to use any external service, especially one that's going to have a metered billing like this. However, we are going to be using the Whisper model. So we can look up and see that OpenAI has several different Whisper models that we are able to use. And depending on our situation, we may want to use a tiny base or small one. If we were to use a medium, large, or the large V2, those are going to be much heavier, and it's also going to take a lot longer. So I would recommend trying out with the base or small first to see your results. And if you want a bit more accuracy, then you may bump it up to the medium. But just keep in mind that with the small and medium, you may need an extra couple of gigabytes of RAM. And so that brings us to a next question, is how are we going to do this? Because there's a lot of different approaches, and the transcribing process can be very slow. So we want to squeeze as much performance out of this as possible. And one way that we can do that is to keep our model in memory. Each time we get a transcribing job, we don't want to have to reload that entire model into the memory again, because that is going to take some time. Instead, we're going to keep this model in the memory, and then we're going to use a background job, which is then going to queue up and then send those requests over to the OpenAI model that we have running in our memory. And if on GitHub, if we look at the Whisper model that we're able to then use, there is a Python package that we're able to leverage, and that's going to allow us to download the model locally on our machine. It does require FFmpeg to be installed on there, so that is going to be a hard dependency. But then when we look at how it's actually getting used, there's a command line that we get, with that Python package. However, that's not really going to be useful in our case because this is then going to load the model with every request. So we're gonna to have to take our own approach, which is a bit more complicated, but I also think it's going to be a bit more performant. So let's start out with a fresh Rails 7 application using ES build and CSS bundling. 
and we're going to generate a scaffold, and I'm just going to call this the projects, and we'll have a name, and we're also going to have a transcription, which will make a text. We also want to keep the status of this, and we're just going to use a numerator, so I'll make this an integer. And before we run the migrations, I want to make sure that the status has a default value of zero. We're also going to be using active storage, so we can run the Rails active underscore storage colon install, and that'll give us the migrations that we need to run. We can then run the Rails DB migrate to migrate our database. And so let's go ahead and get everything set up with the audio file that we're going to be uploading. In the project model, we'll do the has underscore one underscore attached, and that'll take in a file. And we can go ahead and set up our status enum one here. I'll have a pending, which we'll set to zero. We'll have a processing, and we'll set this equal to one. We can do something like a failed is equal to two, and then we'll finally have the completed, and we'll set this equal to three. In the view for the projects in the form, I'm gonna get rid of the status field, and I'm just gonna call it a file field. And we can use this to upload our file from the active storage. We then need to come under the controllers, under the projects controller, and then we can set the file as an allowed parameter. And so we have the basics set up here now. And when a user is uploading an audio or video file, we then want that to go into a background job. And that background job is then going to do the transcribing, updating our model, and then it should all be finished. So when we create a project, if that project saves successfully, then we want to process something. And we're going to make this a background job. So let's call it the process transcription we'll perform later, and then we'll have our project, and we'll just pass in the ID. We could also do something similar when we update a project. However, I don't think Active Storage has a good way where we can see if that file upload was changed. So I'm just going to worry about creating a new record, but just for testing, I'm going to take our project, and I'm going to make it in the pinning status again. And this is for the update, and that way, I can then just test out transcribing the job instead of having to create a new record each time. And so we can generate that job. And again, we called it the process transcription. And then within this transcription job, we can do a few different things. The first thing is I want to take this out of the default queue because that is going to cause some problems down the road. So I want to have a specific queue and we'll just call this the transcriber. And I'm doing this for a few different reasons. One, the process that we're going to use to keep our model in memory to then do the transcribing, we're only going to want one of those services up and running. And as we need to scale this out, we can scale this out horizontally. So adding in more servers to then do the transcriptions. So I'm going to take in our project ID. And then I always like having a few different guard clauses. So we could do a return unless... And then we're just going to go ahead and set our project is equal to the project dot find underscore by, and we want to find it by the ID. So now that we have our project set, we could also do a return unless the project has the file attached. And again, we want to do a return unless the project is in the pending state, or maybe we want to have some kind of retry. So we could do the project dot failed state as well. And so let's go ahead and update that project we'll call the processing, and that'll update the status. We then need to download the file. So we can do a file.binwrite. We can do the rails.root.join, and let's save this under the temp folder, and then let's just get the project ID, and we'll make sure that's a string. And within this file, we can call the project.file.download, and that'll download the file and inject it into this temporary file. And it's going to be important just so that machine doesn't run out of disk space, that at the end here, that we have an ensure, and then we can call the file utils, and then rm underscore rf, and then we can pass in that same path. So that way, if this fails, if it completes, this is always going to run, removing that file. So now we need to have some kind of transcription, and we need to set this equal to something. If we get something back from this transcription, and the project is updated, with that transcription, then we can call the project.completed. Otherwise, we can call the project.failed. And we're gonna have to come back in here 
because we need to update this to do, and we probably also want to have some kind of rescue in the case where maybe the transcriber is not available. Depending on your specific use case, you may want to have this process job try again, and maybe we can do a set wait, and we'll just set and wait for 10 seconds, and then we'll perform later with the project ID. And so this is off to a good start. And I think before we go further, let's go ahead and set up our queue. And this should work regardless of which queue adapter you're going to use. But in this case, I'm going to use Sidekick. So I'll do a bundle, add Sidekick. And once that's done, I'm going to go down in the proc file. And I'm going to set up a worker that's just going to call the Sidekick. And then we'll pass in a configuration file with the config Sidekick. And this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. Because in our background worker, we don't want to always load up this transcriber. We only want to do it on the sidekick workers that are using that transcriber queue. And so we're going to have another job here. And let's just call this one the transcriber. It's also going to run sidekick. But instead of doing the default config sidekick YAML file, I'm going to call a different one. And let's just call it transcriber. You may want to call this something like sidekick default. And then for the transcriber, sidekick transcriber, as that's going to give a bit more context to those files. So I'm going to go ahead and create these. And I'm going to leave that procfile.dev open because we're going to have to come back and revisit this in a few minutes. So for the default sidekick, let's have a concurrency and we'll set this equal to four. For the queues, we're just going to have the default queue here. You may want to have other queues. It doesn't really matter. But in the sidekick transcriber YAML file, we're only going to have one concurrency, and then we're only going to have that transcriber queue. And the reason why we're doing this is because, again, we're keeping that model in memory. As that model is doing the processing, it's going to put out in the standard out, and we don't want to get ourselves in a situation where we're having to worry about thread safety. Because what we could find is that we're processing multiple audio files at the same time on that same worker, and then we're getting a blended mix for each record that we're transcribing, each other's transcriptions. And so next, I'm going to come under the config application.rb, and I'm going to set the config.active underscore job, and we'll set the queue adapter, and we'll set this equal to sidekick. And so now, we can go ahead and start creating this transcriber that's then going to call the OpenAI Whisper model that we have running. And so under the config initializers, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm just going to call this the transcriber. This is going to be a class, transcriber. Let's then have an initialize. And within here, I'm going to have a guard clause. We're going to do a return unless environment variable. And let's just call this the whisper. And we'll check to see if this is equal to true. If it is not equal to true, then we're going to exit out of here. And then it's not going to do anything. So that means if we go back to our procfile.dev, on this transcriber, wherever you had this hosted, or however you're deploying it, you just want to make sure on this particular job that you set the whisper is equal to true. So this is an environment variable that's going to be specific for the transcriber worker. For the other workers and for our web service, we would not want that set. So now we're done with the proc file and back to the transcriber. If that environment variable is set, then we're going to call the open three. And with the p open three, we can then call some kind of script. We're going to have a Python script that we're going to call. And we want to make sure we are calling the dash u. And this dash u option is going to be very important because it stands for the unbuffered binary standard out and standard error. So as the transcriber is feeding us the data, we want to make sure that our Ruby application is getting it. And so then I'm going to interplay it in here. And we'll just get from our Rails root join and let's put in our python script under the lib folder and i'm just going to call it main.py and so with the open three it is a standard ruby library and we're going to be able to set a few different variables we'll have these standard in we'll have these standard out we'll also have these standard error and then we also have the wait through so we'll set these three as equal to that python script so that's going to load it up in memory and again it's only going to do it when we have that whisper is set to true. We then have a method, and we'll just call this transcribe audio. 
This is going to take in some kind of audio file, and then that's going to do something. However, if we think about this, if we were to just call the transcriber and then call new one here and then transcribe the audio, then that's not going to keep this in memory. It's going to close this out or create a memory leak, and neither one of those are good. So instead, I'm going to create a constant. We'll call it transcriber, and that's where I'll call the transcriber.new. So we'll always have this transcriber instance that we can then use in our job. So we can get the transcription is equal to the transcriber. We can then transcribe the audio, and then we can pass in our file, which again is the Rails root join, the temp directory, and then the project ID. So now this part is pretty much complete. We just have to do the transcription. So let's first raise an error, and we'll raise an error like the transcriber, and let's just call this not available. And we can do this unless the standard in. So that does mean that we need to have this class not available, and that's just going to inherit from the standard error. And there's always a case where a Python script could segfault or something like that. And if it does do something like that, then we could do a rescue, and it's going to give us the error and then the epipe. And in that situation, I'm just going to copy and we're just going to reinitialize. With that reinitialize, we can then retry this. And the nice thing is, is that it's going to wait for the model to download for this script to initialize before it sends over the file again. And to send over that file, we're going to take the standard in and we're going to do a puts and then the audio file. When we do that, we're going to get some kind of output and we're just going to store this output in a string. We can do a loop. So we can do a while the line is equal to the at standard out and we need to call the dot gets on here. So that basically means we're going to send over to our Python script an audio file path. We're then going to loop over the standard out, which means that we are keep asking Python for any more information that it has generated. As it gives us information, we'll take our output and we'll combine it with the line that we are getting from the standard out. However, we do need to have some kind of point where we are then saying that the transcription has ended and then we can exit out of this loop. So I'm going to have a break if the line, and let's just do a strip one here just to make sure that we're not picking up any white space. And I'm going to use some kind of special characters. And let's just call this the transcription underscore end with three underscores before and after, because it's highly unlikely that this is going to ever be some kind of transcription. So that means that at the end of our Python script, we're then going to spit out this string so that our Ruby application knows that this file has finished its transcription. And at the end of this transcribe audio method, we then just want to take our output and let's just go ahead and strip it just to get rid of any white space. And so we're pretty much done on the Ruby side because again, let's just go back and trace back what we have. When we create a new record, or in this case, when we update a record, we're going to call this process transcription job. That process transcription job is going to have a few guard clauses just to make sure that this file can be processed. It's then going to move the project over into a processing status. We're going to download the attached file. We're then calling our transcriber, which is then calling the transcribe method, passing in our file path. And then we are making sure that we got a transcription. And then we are updating our project with that transcription. That transcriber audio is initializing the Python script only if the environment variable whisper is set. The transcribe audio method taking in our audio file path is going to send over to that Python script, the audio file path. We're then going to send an empty string output, which is then going to get updated as we loop over the standard out gets, which is coming from our Python script and it's standard out. If in this standard out, we are getting three underscores, transcription underscore end, followed by three more underscores, then that's going to break out of this loop. And then we're just going to send back to our processing job, the transcribed output. And so now we need to create a new file under our lib folder, and we're going to call it the main.py. And so there are going to be some requirements here. 
we do need to do a pip install and a torch. And we're gonna use this simply because we wanna make this file compatible for a CPU or GPU, depending on what you have. We're also going to install the OpenAI-Whisper, and that's all for now. But before we even get to here, we first need to get Python installed. So in my case, I'm using ASDF. I can do a list Python, and you'll see that I had 3.10.9 installed. I'm going to uninstall this, so I'm starting fresh. And I'm also going to go under my cache folder. We can look here. And I'm also going to remove that whisper folder because that's where it's caching all of the models. So now I don't have any Python installed. I am going to use ASDF. If you don't have this already set up, you can do a plugin add and then Python. And then we can do the ASDF install Python. And again, 3.10.9. There may be some dependencies on your computer that you need for Python. However, it's been a while since I've installed this, and so I don't quite remember what all those dependencies are. ASDF does a pretty good job of using BuildKit that's going to install all the dependencies that it needs, but your mileage may vary. And with Python installed, I'm also going to do a brew install ffmpeg. If you remember from the OpenAI Whisper GitHub page, it did say that FFmpeg was a requirement. I already have FFmpeg installed on this machine, so doing the brew install FFmpeg isn't going to do anything. And so now we can go ahead and run the pip install. We can pip install the torch and also the openai-whisper. And this is going to install a lot of packages, and this can also take a little bit of time depending on your machine. But once that's done, we can then go back to our Rails application, or in this case, our main.python script. And we're going to do a few things. We're going to import the sys. We're going to import in torch, import in whisper. We'll also import in warnings because we want to disable any warnings that we are getting. And just so we can keep this running as a process, we're also going to call the from torch.multiprocessing. And we want to import in the process and also the queue. And so at any given point in time, we can go into our lib folder and run the Python and the main.py, and we shouldn't get any errors. It completed without any output, and that's what we would expect for now. So we then want to call the warnings, and we want to call the filter warnings, and we're just going to call the ignore, because we don't want any warnings that Python is giving us to go into the standard out, because then our Ruby script is going to pick those up, and assume those are part of the transcription. We can then set a model is equal to the whisper dot load underscore model. And in this case, I'm just gonna load the small dot en, meaning that this is going to be an English only transcription. And we can call two on here to send this to our CPU, or we can call CUDA on here to send it to our GPU. However, we don't know what the device capabilities of this machine is. So we can set this device is equal to the torch dot device, and we can set it equal to CUDA. And we want to do that if the torch dot CUDA dot is underscore available. Otherwise, so else we can set it equal to the CPU. So I'm gonna save this and I'm going to go ahead and run this again. We'll notice that on this time, it is now doing something. It's downloading 461 megabytes and that is the small English model. And then it exits, and if we were to run this again, it's then not going to do anything because it's already downloaded that model, and it put it under our home directory under the .cache and whisper. So back to the Python script, we're going to have a method here, and we're just gonna call the transcribe underscore audio. That's gonna take in our audio file, and that's all I'm gonna set there for now. We can have some kind of result, is equal to our model.transcribe, and we'll transcribe that audio file. We don't have to worry about the sample rate or anything because the OpenAI Whisper package is going to automatically convert it using FFmpeg into the appropriate format. And if we wanted to, just to test this out, we could print the result and then the text. And I'm just gonna call this method just so we can test this out, and I'm gonna give it an audio file. And the audio file that I'm going to give it is going to be on my users 
I'll put in my username, the desktop, and then the audio-mp3.mp3. And so let's go ahead and run this to see what happens. I'll clear out my terminal, and I'll run the Python in the main.py. It's then going to load the model into the memory, and then it's going to call the transcribe audio method, and then we have our transcription. And so that works. But the problem here is that we can't just call transcribe audio with some static path here. Instead, we're going to need to feed it in into the standard in. And we're going to create another method, and we'll just call this the start model server. This is going to take in some kind of input queue, which is going to be our standard in. And we're also going to take in some kind of output queue. And that's going to be our standard out. And on here, we'll just have an endless loop. So we'll do a while true, and then we can take in our audio file, and we'll set that equal to the input queue, and then we'll call the dot get. If that audio file is none, meaning that it was basically just blank, then we'll break out of there. Otherwise, we'll call our transcribe audio. And we need to pass in our audio file, but then we also need to pass in that output queue. Because we don't just want to print our text here, instead, we need to take in that output queue, and then we can call the output queue, and then we can put to it the result text. And Python is a little bit strange. When we call Python dash u and the main.py, there's this standard thing that you can do with the if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to, and then we can do a check on main, then we can do some stuff. We can set our input queue is equal to a queue. And we can do the same thing for the output queue. We can call the model process is equal to the process. So we're basically making a process that's going to live in memory. And we need to set a target. That target is going to be our start model server. We can then pass in some arguments into there. And that's going to be our input queue and also the output queue. We can then take our model process and call start. And so we're going to have another loop while true. And we'll set our input file is equal to the system in the standard in. We can read line and then we can strip any white space. And then we can do a check just to make sure if not input file or input file is equal to exit. And so this is just so we can test it out locally here. Then we can set our input queue and we can put none on there. We can break out of our loop and then the application would be done. However, if we do have a file, we can take our input queue and then we can put the input file and then we can print back the output queue we can get and then we need to call the flush is equal to true. So that way we are not waiting for a buffer, but it is then just going to output into the standard out. Oh, and I do have to call the parentheses on here because Python's a bit strange. And then at the very end of this, if you remember in the transcriber, we have this magic text that we're expecting. So in that Python script, after we have our output queue and it's finished getting everything, we can then print out that transcription end. And there is one little gotcha, but it's around the GPU using CUDA and not loading into memory correctly. The model will load into memory, but then the process won't start correctly. So we have to do a if the torch multiprocessing, then we do the get start method. We'll set the allow none is equal to true. Then we can call the torch dot multiprocessing, and then we can set the start method, and we want to set equal to spawn. And so again, that's just a little bit of a weird thing that we have to do because of the CUDA and the multiprocessing. But we can test this out again. We'll call the Python main.py, and it looks like it's not doing anything. It looks like it's hung. However, it is waiting for an input. So if in our standard in, we give it some kind of file path and hit enter, it's then going to do the transcribing and then output the transcription with that transcription end. I'm going to type exit to exit out of that, and then it returns me back to my command prompt, releasing it from memory. And so for the big moment here, let's test this all out. I'll go back into my main application. Oh, and we do have one little bug in our transcriber in the standard end. We need to do a put on the audio file instead of a put. But once that's done, we can start up our Rails application. 
and we can do that with a bin dev. We'll then see we have our worker and also the transcriber up and running. I'm going to clear the terminal again. We can create a new project. I'll then select a file and then we'll hit create project. We can then refresh the page because we haven't done any real time updates. And then we can see that we got the transcription and the status is completed. So I want to make this a bit more user friendly. And let's just first start with this automatically getting updated as the transcription is done from the background job. And so to do that, we're going to come under the models and then on the project. Whenever a project is created or updated, we just want to call the broadcasts. And I've covered broadcasts in the past, so be sure to go check out some of those older episodes to see how that works exactly. But this is a new feature of Hotwire. So with Turbo, we are getting that broadcast functionality. And so under the views, if we go under the projects, if we go to the show page, we see we have a render project, which is rendering that project partial. And within this project partial, we already have a DOM ID for the project, which is going to be important because that is what broadcast from the turbo stream is going to look for. And we can call the turbo underscore stream underscore from, and then we can specify our project. We'll save this. We'll then go back into our application. I'm just going to edit and then update this. We'll see that it went from pending to processing very fast and now completed. So let's do this again, but I'm going to just update this transcription text and then we'll see that we're processing and then we have the updated text. And in the original demo, the way that I got that progress bar in there, it's really just kind of a cheap trick more than anything else because we already had the status and this entire div element is getting updated as it's doing stuff. So I'm just going to paste this in and run through it real quick. We have a container for our progress bar. I am using Bootstrap for this episode. So a lot of this is just going to be specific around Bootstrap. However, Tailwind has its own progress bars that you would be able to implement. And then I basically just have a progress bar section for pending, processing, failed if it failed, or completed if it's completed. And I'm just doing a check if the project failed. Otherwise, assume that it's completed here. And again, the reason why this works is because as we get any updates to the project model, we are broadcasting that to itself. So because we had the turbo stream from the project, it's then going to listen for an ID of that DOM project ID. So coming back, I can just refresh the page and it'll be completed. If we edit and then update it again, you'll see that it goes immediately to processing and then completed. And so I want to see it sitting in pending for a while. So on the jobs, I'm just going to add a sleep for one second. With that sleep for one second, we can edit this job again. We'll hit update. It's pending. It then processes and then it'll go into the completed in just a moment. And so this is a very simple audio file. So let's go back and create a new project. And we're going to try with a bigger video file. So I'll hit create project, it'll then go pending processing, and eventually it'll go completed. But let's also then go back and I'm going to create another project and I'm going to do my 30 minute video. I'll go ahead and let this one start up. We'll see it's pending processing. While that's processing, it's going to take about eight minutes. I'm going to create another one and we'll just have this for the audio MP3. And so I'm just going to leave it like this and then we'll see the completed on the first one, which is the large video file. And then hopefully we'll see the processing and completed on the second one shortly after. And so it's completed. And then immediately we saw the processing and then completed on the other one. So it all works. And so I want to do one more thing because we could be in a situation where we have a auto provisioning for our background workers. So I'm going to come under the lib and remember, I've already cleared out my cache for the whisper and I'm going to come up and I'm going to change this to a medium. It's going to be a lot larger, so it's going to take a while once we start up the service. I'll close out the application so it should release everything back to memory and then I'll start this up again. I'll start up the Rails application. It'll start up that whisper worker and I'll create a new project while it's still downloading. And so we see it's pending, it's processing, and we're just going to wait for this to complete. 
you'll see that it is taking a bit longer to complete because it's still trying to download that file first. Once it's finished downloading that file, then the actual processing will happen and then it'll be completed. This could take a while simply because that is a much larger model. If we look at the terminal, one thing that I don't like about this approach is that we don't see anything really happening, except we did see a large amount of downloads and then it completed. So it did load it into memory and it did complete. So if you do have, or if you're concerned about a auto provisioning for this transcriber worker, it will take a bit to download that model. But once it's downloaded, then it should then process the job as you would expect. And one thing that you could speed that up is if you copy over that cache directory, upload it to S3 or something, and then pull that down. And so overall, this really is a cool approach because the transcriptions are fairly accurate. And just as a rough estimate for that medial model, it did take about nine gigabytes of RAM. So you do want to be conscientious about that. And even the small model can take four to five gigabytes of RAM. So you definitely want to test this out to make sure that you're getting the correct model for the server that you'll be running it on, but also that you're using a big enough one to get the appropriate transcriptions. I did find with the tiny model that it was okay, but it was more in lines of what we would find with using something like a cloud service transcriber. So I'm just gonna come back and I'll edit this and I'll upload it again, and then we'll see if it makes any difference. In this case, it actually came out as the same. If we go back to the MP4 one, I'm going to just update this project again. We'll see that we did get some changes as well. So you do want to test it out to make sure that you're using the correct model that's going to give you the best results. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.